Hi, my name's Ben Emmett, and I work at Redgate Software as part of the team developing SQL Monitor. In this short video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to install and get up and running with SQL Monitor. When you install SQL Monitor, you set up three components. Firstly, the web server, which hosts the SQL Monitor web interface. Secondly, the monitoring service, a Windows service that collects data about your SQL servers. And finally, the SQL Monitor database, a SQL Server database that stores data about your SQL servers. SQL Monitor is agentless, so there's nothing to install on your monitored servers themselves. We've already downloaded the SQL Monitor installer from the website, so time to run it. Accept the license agreement and choose whether to opt in to send us back error reports and anonymized usage data. This is very useful to us and helps us track down any errors, so please do consider opting in. On this screen, you can choose to only install part of SQL Monitor if, for example, you want to run the web server and monitoring service on separate machines. For an evaluation though, it's easiest to just install both components on one machine, which is what I'll do here. Now choose your web server. You can either use a built-in web server or set up to use IIS. I'm going to go with SQL Monitor's built-in web server, which is the option used by most of our customers and which we recommend. Next, you can modify some default settings, such as the installation locations or port numbers. I'll leave these with the defaults, and we'll also test here that the ports are available. Now you set up the data repository to hold the data collected and processed by SQL Monitor. You can allow SQL Monitor to create the database for you, or you can provide SQL Monitor with an empty database that you've already created. For this installation, I'll ask SQL Monitor to create the database for me. We set up the connection details to the database and we're ready to carry out the installation. Most installations should complete without issue, but by its nature SQL Monitor can run into environmental issues such as network access problems. If you do hit any problems with the installation or need help with any aspect of your evaluation, please just give us a call or drop an email to sqlmonitor at redgate.com. SQL Monitor is now up and running. On this first run, you're asked to provide an administrator password. You can change this at any time, or switch to using Active Directory authentication instead if you prefer. SQL Monitor isn't currently monitoring any servers, so our first job is to add some servers. We type in the name of the SQL server to be monitored, or the cluster name, which will add all nodes and instances in the cluster automatically. You can add multiple machines or clusters by comma separating them. Now we enter the credentials. SQL Monitor requires two sets of credentials. Firstly, a Windows domain account to log into the host machine, that is, the Windows server on which the SQL Server instance is running. And secondly, authentication details to log into the SQL Server instance. Monitored servers can be grouped together so that you can apply the same alert configuration settings to them more easily. For example, you may have a number of production servers on different host machines, but you want them all to use the same alert settings. You can configure the groups yourselves, or use the default groups that ship with SQL Monitor. It will take a few seconds to complete the connection to the servers, but as you can see, this entire process has taken less than 5 minutes to run through. And that's it. SQL Monitor is now monitoring your environment. You've now started your 14-day evaluation, so why not give us a call and we can answer any questions you have about SQL Monitor and help ensure you get the best evaluation experience possible. Thanks very much for watching.